Welcome to the COVID-19 coronavirus update video part 2. Today we're going to be talking about, as we said in the last video, the quarantine. Did Putin really release 400 to 500 lions and tigers across Russia? And I heard there was a couple in India that named their twin babies, what would you know it? Corona and COVID. Maybe they're the saviors. I mean, that means we had to wait a long time for that to happen. I mean, they may have a cure in their body, but I highly doubt it. But one more thing, I heard so many people are buying toilet paper. What are you buying to eat that you're wiping your ass so much? Now, we're gonna go, I mean, we're gonna go over how the virus actually works. Did you know the virus is not actually even a living thing? It's just something that was created from, I think, I'm not really sure what it's made of. All I know is it needs a host. Like it's a monster that needs a host for it to actually get activated. It, it does have DNA and RNA inside of it. And it's known as the Corona because Corona really sounds, I think, I'm pretty sure like crown. And the virus is, um, has crowns, like crowns all around it. If those crowns weren't there that's surrounding the virus, those like antenna things, and if they were broken, they won't be able to inject it into the cell for the cell to create multiple parts of the virus, which will go around and infect other cells because it's more like a commander. We're gonna be talking about all those things here on part two of COVID-19. And part three will tell you about the horror apocalypse movie we'll be making. So listen to the slow version of me talk about something we could talk about really fast right now in a very, very, very slow way. He takes long as shit. I mean, he takes so long, I, I can't. I mean, I shouldn't say this, but yo, leave a subscribe, leave a YouTube, I mean, yeah, leave a YouTube link for your channel, leave a video, leave a comment, and let's get on with it. Here with COVID-19 Part 2 Coronavirus update and how it really infects you. Also, one more thing that I didn't mention was on April 1st, we were originally supposed to release this video, but since I wasn't able to do the full thing, I did release an April Fool's Quarantine Over Prank video, which would be either at the ending of this video, you can check for the link, or the link may be in the description below. So if you want to see April Fool's prank, you can either go on my channel and check it out, or you can check it out. And for more videos like these, just subscribe, hit that subscribe button, let's see how many likes we could get, and let's help keep the world safe. Because everything is low because the economy is collapsing, and uh, not much business is going on because of the virus going around and affecting everyone. And the quarantine is also bringing back wildlife. I heard there are swans in the canals of Italy. I haven't seen that, and then I heard it was, that happens all the time. I'm like, I haven't seen that in a long time. I actually have never seen that. Uh, dolphins were coming back, but that's probably less both activity. And they were saying there's a lot of otters and all that stuff, which was fake news created by Twitter. Of course, like a lot of other fake news that was created by Twitter or any other social media platform for people to get clicks. Now, and this happened in Italy's coast and all that. And... Uh, I heard because of the quarantine, Putin in Russia, there was a claim saying he released 400 to 500 lions and tigers all across Russia to go and keep people in their homes, which is a stupid idea. I'm not saying it actually happened because it was someone that claimed it, but even if they did happen, it's a stupid idea. You put a bunch of lions and tigers in, guess what's going for dinner? People. There's going to be people in their houses that are going to be starving and they can't leave their house because lions and tigers are going to be there because everyone's in quarantine and they're going to be attacking anybody that comes outside of their house and they're going to probably try to break into your house knowing you're in there. They're going to go and do all these things and there's not much you can do about it. And even if you did spread all the lions and tigers across Russia, what makes you not think that you, they are trained or anything? They will just probably attack you and kill you. And how are you going to bring all those tigers and lions back once the outbreak is over? It just kind of causes a lot more problems. Originally. That's not what happened, that was just a claim by some guy who probably wanted views like a lot of other people. But the real claim was Putin did sign saying saying nobody over 60 should be leaving their home and Putin is about 67 or 68. That excludes him from whatever's going on. So that's been talking about the quarantine. Uh, all the lions and tigers at least will it bring back wildlife and animals it hasn't because i know if the animals did come back to our lands it's not kind of their environment it's more of our environment and they would still see us in our homes as we were going to run out and attack them but they're wondering why we're staying in our homes and why we're not leaving and the most of this stuff is fake news because they there are some maybe some real news like i think penguins and the zoo were able to visit their friends without or maybe some zoo animal i wonder how the zoo animals are doing actually how are the zoo animals doing because people are not there anymore? Are they just doing whatever the hell they want? Were they let out of their cages? Probably not, but there probably has to be someone to go and... Well, give them food and stuff, right? I'm not sure how that's working out right now. I think it's still open. 
but it is a 2.0 version of SARS, a mutated version of SARS, this COVID-19 going around infecting people. And now we're going to talk about how the virus works, as I did say earlier. How the virus exactly works is, I don't know if it's airborne or it comes to a droplet, but I know the, once the virus actually gets into your body through the mouth, the nose, the ears, any way to get the body goes straight to your lung system. And it doesn't matter. People say it's because you have a weak immune system that the virus is able to infect you, but that's not actually true. You can have a strong immune system too, or a weak one. It depends on how smart your cells are. And the way the virus works is cells don't have free will like you or me and you as in my camera, my camera doesn't have free will unless it is artificial intelligence but at the same time I'm not even sure if that does have free will does it? I mean they've been talking to each other so they have free will to talk and then they would learn more than people and there's probably a whole other war coming robots against humans but right now we're doing a COVID-19 virus war not a uh, alien outer space virus war coming to attack all of us just like lions and tigers are gonna break into your house if you live in Malfrey but this uh this virus works as it goes into the body system and if you don't know epidermal cells are like the lung tissue cells that protect the alveoli's and the air sacs inside your body which help you to breathe because they say it does cause breathing problems and the way that you can't feel it for a couple of weeks is it actually takes some time to kick in so since cells aren't able to actually cells are like people in the military they're the the rookies the what's it called the maggots you know and then the, the commander they're like and they're like, yes, sergeant. That's what cells are. Yes, sergeant. Hall. Attention. The virus is the sergeant. So the virus. So in a military case, a sergeant would tell the maggots or the rookies or the marines or the troops to go, and they would tell them to do it, and they would do it without question because it was a commandment sent by their main general to go and they, to do this thing. The cells don't have free will, so they can't ask questions as much as that's actually possible for them to ask questions. But they, when they get the instructions that they get, they just follow the instructions because they're ignorant of what's going on. So what a virus does is uh, COVID, especially the COVID-19 virus, goes to the top of the cell, the epidermal cells, the lung cells, and it puts the implant, the virus, into the lung cell, and it gives the epidermal cells instructions and the instructions are duplicate the virus within the cell and create more of it so that's what a cell does because it doesn't understand what it's doing it's just doing whatever instructions you because the COVID-19 put its genetic DNA saying your instructions are to it's manipulating the cell to create more of itself and because it's doing that the cells are just creating more of the virus and then the final instruction that the COVID-19 virus actually gives the cell is to blow up so once it blows up more of the COVID-19 goes and it goes into other cells and those cells start blowing up and they start killing each other and when the brain starts to notice that cells are dying it sends the immune system and the immune system is actually the deadly part it's not mainly it's it is the virus that's killing you but the virus is using its own kind to kill you it's using the mute the immune system because when the immune system goes the virus is already spreading so it doesn't just spread to the cells it spreads to all spreads all to all the different cells that are coming for the immune system to attack you and those cells are getting angry and in fighting mode and they would already be in fighting mode because they're trying to kill the epidermal cells that are infected but since they are in fighting mode already their other cells are not sure if they're in fighting mode because they're infected or in fighting mode because they're not infected because they could be either one because cells are kind of blind to it they're not sure who is who because they're supposed to act in the same exact manner and what these uh, so-called things do is the brain starts to realize that's what's going on and then it's not sure what's going on to what's actually going on with the different which your cells are infected or not so it sends the neurophils in. Neurophils are cells that come inside and they release enzymes which doesn't just it kills as many of the friends as it does the enemies because it doesn't know which are infected and which are not infected so it just kills all and then the killer T cells also come in which have which are like neurophils they come in from the immune system as well and they not only tell cells that are infected to commit suicide but they also tell the cells that are not infected to commit suicide so it's kind of your immune system that's actually fighting against you and it's creating the virus to make people go insane because you don't know who is who and they're all just killing each other like a cancer cell infects people and a cancer or a zombie cell infects people it gets the infected and then infected kill each other and then people are not sure but in this case people aren't sure who the infected is and who are not the infected so they just put out enzymes and stuff to and cells put out enzymes and stuff to kill both cells because they're not able to share or differentiate what's going on or who commits suicide now, a lot of these cells, a lot of these, if a lot of the epidermal cells were killed and they weren't able to, to like, 
fix all of them at a time. The aviolis, this is why it takes maybe one to two weeks for people to know if they actually have the virus or not. Because after these epidermal cells are killed, the bacteria can go to the aviolis, which cause the breathing problems. Because when you when you're in this virus, the pneumonia virus that's, that the first psychic did at the outbreak that went out you would then start to have breathing problems, but you would already get all the other fever stuff that would like take seven days because everything's getting fought in your lungs and the breathing problems start after when you know it's actually gone bad and all of your epidermal cells have died. Uh, I'm not sure if you would feel it right now if you did have the virus or not, but if you took a deep inhale, And you inhale for about 10 seconds. I should have done the right thing. Uh, you inhale for about 10 seconds. There is a possibility if you don't have any coughing during those 10 seconds, you don't have a brain problem, or your fluids are filling up in your lungs, or you don't have any body pains, you don't have the virus, but that's a way to check. But there's a possibility you might also have the virus because it's not fully attacked the avioles or fully attacked the stuff yet. So what the AVO, so the avioles, the air sacs, they would get the bacteria to them, and the problem with the bacteria is what could, it could affect the lung system in the long term as well. Even if you recovered from the virus, your lung system would probably get infected. I wouldn't want mine to because I love talking. Talking is the best thing in the world, voicing, rapping, music, anything. Like I gotta do it, but you never really got it back. So what we're saying is these cells, they go and it will create bacteria, and the dangerous part is if the bacteria goes into the blood system, I mean it's already cre creating airing problems, which is why people have to go to the hospital for breathing. And then this bacteria created by all the different germs dying or different cells dying would go into the bloodstream. When it goes into the bloodstream, there will be antibodies that would, which are proteins that kill viral infections created by plasma B cells and B memory cells. And these antibodies, they stop this from happening, but if the bacteria goes across the body, even if you do have vaccines for that, it's a possibility that it could kill, kill you because all the bacteria has gone into your blood and it's gone in too much into the cells and they're not able to take them all out because there would be so many cells that are dying. And that's technically how the virus goes across the body and it's a, that's why it's killing a lot of people whether they have a strong or a weak immune system. It is not good because it depends on, you should still keep clean, you still be cautionary, keep your hands clean because you could wash the virus right off your hands using soap and water and you would clean all these other things and it's not good to have uh, to believe it won't happen to you because you have a health, you have a proper healthy immune system. But the immune system won't even know what's going on. It depends on how strong your, how many cells you probably have are there, because it would depend on how smart your immune system is to not kill and try to figure out which are the infected and non-infected. That's why it's been attacking and killing a lot of people because they're not the cells are not sure which are the non-infected and the infected. There was one guy. He was born during the. He's kind of a lucky guy, I would say. He was born during the flu, the Spanish flu which killed about, I think, 15 million to 50 million people, and that was in 1918, or 1920, 1919, I think, and a hundred and he's, yeah, I think it was 1919 that it did that, and he came, been through all these different pandemics, this is the worst pandemic in 50 years, he's been through all the different pandemics that have been going on, and now in 2020, he got the coronavirus at 101 years old, and I don't know how strong his immune system was, but seeing that he actually did recover because uh, I think the cells figured out what it was and they tried to stop it from attacking, the antibodies were able to figure out what antigens were attacking. Antigens are like the monsters that kill antibodies and kill other cells and then they come from the infected cells. And he survived it, he got released from the hospital for um, going through the COVID-19 virus. And that's what I'm saying, just whether you have weak or strong, keep yourself clean. I'm not sure how much a mask would do because it might be airborne, but you would still be breathing in. It's not like the mask is air filtered unless you got one of those like gas masks. I mean, I used to wear that a long time ago, but that was because we were doing chemicals, like exterminating chemicals. But I have a video a picture of it and it looks like a sick album cover. Well, I hope you enjoyed that update video and you are staying clean whether you're a healthy immune system or not because even if you do have a strong immune system, some way, if you have a really strong one, it might fight against you. And did you know that that person that I was talking about earlier that was 101 year old, years old that was diagnosed with COVID-19 that somehow sort of miraculously immortally survived was actually also in the Spanish flu? But not only that, he was also a Holocaust survivor. This guy's surviving all these really bad things that are happening to our world or were and now are but 
in the next video, we're going to be talking about the vaccine, how anti uh, antibodies fight the antigens, like it's an antigen war, just like in the movie we were talking about at, at the very beginning of the first video. And we also did make an April Fool's video, which is now, uh, should be, well, it should be showing up on the screen right now. So you can click on that and check out the April Fool's video. And you can also, maybe it might be in the description below, you can check it out there for the April Fool's video we did made for Quarantine is Over April Fool's Prank. But that's been all for today, and we'll see you with more COVID-19 video with part 3, the vaccine. That's being made, as far as I know. But that's been all for today. Smooth Reality, out.